has this hedge fund manager found the next major global economic landmine to be added to this already massively large global economic minefield. So I want to highlight this guy's work if you're not familiar with him. I've kind of briefly talked about it, but the hedge fund community and now Wall Street is starting to talk about his work. Uh, the guy's name is Christopher Cole, and he runs Artemis Capital Management. They specialize in volatility. Uh, he has a lot of research out. He writes white papers on volatility in his hedge fund, which is uh, close to is almost three hundred million dollars, and he plans to cap it around three hundred million dollars. Is developed just for trading and hedging volatility strategies. Uh, so what he has unearthed with his research is that basically since the 2008 financial crisis and massive central bank intervention and the asset markets, whether that was the general stock market, which is up over 250%, uh, the real estate market, the bond market, uh, a lot of people have been piggybacking the central banker intervention and betting that the, the there's not any crashes or volatility in the general stock market. So there's this long New York Times article, which I'm going to link you guys to, and it talks about Christopher Cole's research. I've been trying to get him on a podcast. I've reached out to him. Maybe uh, you guys can send it to his um, investor relations department uh, or his marketing department, see if he'll come on for a podcast to speak about this at length more. But he basically says that there's 60, at least 60 billion in direct managed money doing the short volatility trade uh, and then there's up to, according to his research, $1.5 trillion, which is a just mind-boggling number. You know, it's it, it makes the naked credit default swaps that AIG was selling, it, it makes it basically small uh, with leverage. So basically, they've been collecting, if you're not familiar with, uh, these are using derivatives trades, these are uh, using leverage and derivatives trades, a short straddle. Short straddle is an, uh, I'm going to attach the definition of it in Investopedia if you're just a beginner or not familiar with what it is. But basically, a lot of managed money, so that's hedge funds, pension funds, institutional money, have been trying to figure out new ways to generate income for their clients because it's getting harder and harder because asset price valuations are very, very high. So what they have come up with is that this trade has grown. It's, you know, it's, it's gone exponential, basically the size of this trade since uh, the reflation uh, of 2009, where stock prices have not really had a meaningful correction since 2009, is that this trade has gone larger and larger where people basically keep betting that there won't be volatility in the stock market. So they've been doing short straddles, collecting premiums on the S&P 500 index, probably the Dow, probably the NASDAQ, and of course on the VIX. So uh, if this is a 10-year chart of the VIX here, and you know there's less and less frequent spikes. And I think if you look at this chart, I'm, I'll attach it, you can look at it, Yahoo Finance, this is a 10-year chart, there's less and less spikes. And one of the reasons, I think the major reason, is the central banks. But I think this managed money is piggybacking the central banker trade. And they've gotten greedier and greedier, leveraging more and more uh, of borrowing money and leveraging to try and squeeze each and, uh, and every little penny out of this trade, collecting premium. So when you do a short straddle, you, you, uh, you short a position in both a call and a put. You sell a put and a call, and you're betting that a stock or a stock market index or some other type of ETF or index will stay in a trading range. And so I think what has happened is that, you know, when there's big spikes like this, let me move to the one year chart. You know, we had that big spike. I did a short little video on this uh, last month about the uh, when North Korea launched their first missile. Uh, and it uh, landed, you know, in the in the sea, uh, around Japan in the ocean. You know, we had a big spike on the VIX, and then it crashed right back down. I think, you know, this leverage money trade is doubling down. Anytime there's a big spike, they just put more and more on the trade because they're worried about the trade blowing up. So this is kind of the calm before the storm, and what happened before the housing market blew up. Uh, maybe 2006 and seven before you know subprime started extremely blowing up. Warren Buffett has called derivatives weapons of mass financial destruction. Not only do we have a derivatives explosion on the short volatility trade uh, that's shorting the VIX and shorting general stock market indices, we we also have it with massive massive amounts of leverage. And I can guarantee you that the counterparties do not have this collateral. So at some point this is gonna. If you were a hedge fund, you would look to see at who's holding 
these bad trades which counterparty is and then that would be you know an out of the money put out of money uh out of the money trade uh buy out of the money puts on those if they're cheap you'd find the counterparty maybe a reinsurance company or insurance company or a smaller bank or something that's specializing in these trades so i i don't think there's nearly not nearly enough collateral to cover losses on these trades especially because it's being done with leverage so so we'll find out what happens with this but uh you know after after the uh first uh north korean uh icbm launch uh you know there was a big spike in the vix i did a short little video on it and then it cra the vix crashed back down so i think they doubled down on their trades but this this is not going to end well in my opinion you know the people who are making money off this they're not a lot of them who are uh money managers hedge fund guys institutions on wall street they're not putting a dime of their own money into it christopher cole actually did a very long interview on real vision tv if you're a real vision, real vision tv subscriber you probably saw the interview a couple months ago i think it was about two months ago and he said he in doing this research putting out the white papers research for his hedge fund he went and talked to hedge fund managers and other institutional money managers on Wall Street who are doing the trade, and they said they've been making money off the trade, but they would never put a dime of their own money into the trade. They're only putting their own clients' money at risk. They wouldn't put, uh, because they know how dangerous and risky the trade is. So they wouldn't put any of their own money into the trade. So the analogy I like to use is that they're basically picking penny uh, quarters uh, off the freeway during rush hour traffic or any time during the freeway. So you know there's probably some valuable items people dropped on the freeway, but you're risking losing your life or making your wife or partner a widow by trying to, you know, dodge cars going 60 miles an hour faster on the freeway. It's just too risky. It's the risk is not worth the reward, but yet this is what has happened and because people are trying to squeeze every last drop of blood out of the stone. This is what happens when people, uh, banks and others think that the central banks uh will will do a bailout and there's moral hazard in the system uh people think they won't get fired uh people think that they won't go to prison for fraud so this this is a type of extra uh problems we have created so you can basically uh the uh another anecdotal story i've heard is that a day trader who i think had about five hundred thousand dollars or maybe a little bit more but he took fi about around five hundred thousand dollars of his capital and starting in 2009 because he saw what the central banks were doing he was betting that the central banks wouldn't allow the stock market to crash again and just by shorting the vix there's been a couple hiccups along the way but the guy has been shorting the vix with leverage and he's turned since uh 2009 i believe five hundred thousand dollars into over 12 million now, if he keeps up with this trade and doesn't close it out, he could blow up, go bankrupt, and end up owning, uh, owing more money than he started than he initially risked. So hopefully he's pulled some money off the table. But this just goes to show that a lot of people, whether it's day traders, whether it's uh, hedge fund managers, Johnny Come Lately's, uh, a lot of people have hopped on this trade. This trade was not nearly as large initially, but now it's ballooned and ballooned and ballooned to the point where it's just overly bloated overly massive and uh you know uh, uh there's a lot of scenarios where it, it could easily prick and um you know counterparties go bankrupt we're back in another similar situation so uh, i'll attach my links to this i would like to get christopher cole on to ask him uh you know whether uh the counterparty risk and other things about whether this aig but this is just something else to keep an eye on i wanted to make this short video definitely go out there if you have time and read this article about new york times uh from the new york times and uh i think the new york times writer he was very skeptical about this piece but if he would have interviewed a lot of other hedge fund managers, I've seen other hedge fund managers talk about this trade. Even Kyle Bass recently has said that long volatility, uh, getting long volatility exposure is a good hedge for your uh, diversified investment portfolio. So there's a lot of hedge. So the, you know, the mainstream New York Times financial press on Wall Street is uh, doesn't like this article and was very skeptical of Christopher Cole in this piece making it like he's you know small time player doesn't know what he's talking about but if you talk with a lot of hedge fund managers like you hendry kyle bass and others you know they're well aware that this is a a very growing festering problem and it's been magnified and ballooned with massive amounts of leverage okay well that's it for today today guys for the short video and uh feel free to comment on it and uh, hopefully i can get christopher cole on in the near future to talk about this wall street for main street needs your help since the middle of 2016 
YouTube continues to increasingly censor and sabotage the growth and success of my channel with dramatically slower or no subscriber growth. A huge decrease in views per month compared to 2016 and well over $10,000 lost in Google AdSense revenues the last 18 months. I should have been way over 20,000 subscribers and way over 3 million views last year, but it feels like I am Sisyphus trying to roll a heavier boulder with more and more additional weight up a steeper and steeper hill. In the last few weeks, all of my videos have been set to demonetization by default, and I have to manually protest each video. This is in addition to even lower than usual Google AdSense revenues after the adpocalypse started over a year ago for me. This has also affected my ability to get paid advertisers to agree to deals not involving YouTube as I lost three grand per month in paid advertising deals at the end of June 2017 because all my analytics are down a lot thanks to YouTube censorship algorithms that have intentionally kneecapped the growth of my channel. With YouTube slash Google slash Alphabet slash don't be evil strongly considering demonetizing or setting all libertarian, conservative, or pro-Trump content to private to prevent any sharing or monetization, it is imperative I have a contingency plan to figure out how to make a living off my content. Each 30 to 40 minute video takes a few hours of my time before it's released to the public. There's a strong possibility that in the near future, YouTube will force me to move all or almost all my content to a new video upload website that allows free speech or behind a paywall on my own website. Thanks if you have already made a one-time or recurring monthly donation, and thanks in advance for any future donations as I decide the future of my channel and what to do with my content going forward. We accept one-time donations on the Wall Street for Main Street website via PayPal, Bitcoin, or gold money. You can also become a monthly Patreon contributor for a buck or more a month if you want to help me out. And don't forget to like each video on YouTube and share it with your friends and family if you think they, they would like the content.